Hip-Hops is 1987.com. Although the 2018 NBA playoffs are underway right now, we're currently here in Atlanta preparing for the 2018-19 season. We're live right now at Emory Healthcare Sports Complex where the Atlanta Hawks practice and they call home as we get ready to meet new Atlanta Hawks coach Lloyd Pierce. This is his first time serving as a head coach. We'll talk to Coach Pierce, see what he has to offer here. A lot of NBA players, a lot of NBA coaches have high hopes and have been speaking a lot of great things about Coach Pierce. So we'll be looking forward to the energy, the knowledge, and what he brings here as the Hawks are not rebuilding building, but they're moving in a new direction and they're looking forward to the future. Stay tuned for a lot more. Terrell Thomas, Hip Hop's 1987. Follow Eldorado 2452 and Danny Digital for all your Atlanta Hawks and NBA news. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Emory Healthcare Courts here in Atlanta for a very big day for our Atlanta Hawks franchise. First, I'd like to welcome those of you who are watching uh, today on Fox Sports Southeast, streaming live on Fox Sports Go. The Hawks Facebook page is carrying this press conference. And of course, our radio partner, our flagship station, 92.9 The Game, is on the air as well. So a welcome to all of you that have joined us here today. My name is Bob Rathbun. I'm the television voice of the Atlanta Hawks. Travis Schlenk, our general manager, to my far right and your left, and our new head coach, Lloyd Pierce. We'll be hearing from both of them as we move along through the press conference. And at the end, we'll have a time, of course, for your media questions, etc. Uh, but first of all, welcome to all of you. Thanks for taking time. We've got a lot of staff here, a lot of excited people here for, for you, Lloyd. And uh, it's a big day for all of us, and we welcome you to Atlanta. We'll begin, Travis, with you. Uh, this was a, a big moment for any franchise when you name a head coach, and the excitement today is, is robust as we welcome Lloyd. What made him your man? Well, when Jeff Peterson and I started the process of going out and interviewing people, we had some criteria we were looking for. Uh, first, we wanted somebody with a strong track record of being able to connect with young players uh, and be able to develop those young players, not only on the court, but off the court as they go into the main as well. Uh, Lloyd's track record in that um, speaks for itself. Uh, everywhere he's been, every stop he's made, he's been a big part in developing the players on that roster. But that was really the first two things that we looked at. And a previous relationship began it all back at Golden State for one season. Yeah, Lloyd and I worked together. Um, I had a comfort level with him, obviously. Um, and the things that I spoke about earlier, developing young players and being able to connect with young players, I was able to watch that firsthand back in Golden State. No, it's fantastic. Well, before Lloyd, we ask you a couple of questions. We have some uh, a lot of family and friends that we'd like to recognize that we're all sitting off here to, to my right. But two people in particular, two great women in your life that we'd like to introduce first and foremost. Your wife, Melissa, is here, and it is great to have you. Welcome to Atlanta. And it's you can applaud, absolutely. And your mom, Leslie Mackey, is here for this big day. Leslie, welcome. I know you're a proud mom. It's Mother's Day time, too, for you. That's outstanding. Well, Lloyd, first of all, welcome to Atlanta. This is... Uh, a great day for all of us. We welcome you to our city. We welcome you to our franchise. And I know you're excited to get going. I am. Uh, thank you guys for being here. It's uh, obviously an honor, a privilege to be here and introduce the, the head coach of the Atlanta Hawks. It's a fabulous, fabulous organization uh, that I'm excited about after meeting with uh, Tony and Travis and Grant Hill uh, last week. And the opportunity was presented. It was one I couldn't pass on. Speaking of that opportunity, what attracted you the most to this job? You know, Travis and I spent a lot of time just uh, communicating the vision. Okay. Go ahead. We, we communicated the vision of, uh, you know, what, what, what he was looking for when, when he approached me about the position. And, you know, a, a talented, a young roster, a lot of opportunities in the draft to, to advance the program and the organization. And the timing is right. If you look at the facility that we're in now, it's a beautiful practice court. Uh, the renovations that's occurring down at the, uh, at the arena, bringing the G League team here in a year from now and bringing everything together, uh, I can't think of a better opportunity to grow and start my, my career as a head coach. You come to us from the Philadelphia 76ers, five years as an assistant there. 
what are some of the similarities and some of the differences between the two? Yeah, so when I, when I started in Philadelphia uh, five years ago, I had left a Memphis Grizzlies program that was in a position. We were just coming off a championship run. We had made it to the Western Conference Finals and a pretty established team and the opportunity to go to Philadelphia was one that allowed me as a coach to grow. Uh, it was an opportunity to move to the front of the bench and empower myself and to uh, help Brett Brown establish a culture uh, from the ground up. And you see where they are today. So just as this opportunity was presented, the similarities are the same in terms of starting the program from the start and trying to build, build a championship uh, organization. There's a lot of pieces that are in place that didn't happen in Philadelphia that we're excited about here. And uh, I think just the energy, the energy of Tony, the energy of Travis, Everybody involved is, is committed to the, to the franchise and the growth of the franchise. And so that, that's the uh, similarities. I feel confident in uh, being here in Atlanta. You're a native of San Jose. You went and stayed to play collegiately in the Bay Area in Santa Clara for one of the great college coaches uh, in our game, in, in Dick Davey. He's a guy that you played for, you coached under. He has meant so much to you in your career. Yeah, yeah you know, Coach, I mean, he was part of Santa Clara University for 30 years. Uh, as an assistant coach and as a head coach, he was responsible for me getting into the coaching profession. But more importantly, he was a mentor. Uh, he took care of me. He cared about all of his players. And uh, his passion, his commitment to his players is something I take from him. It's an unbelievable gentleman. Uh, he's retired now. He lives in Hawaii. He sent me a text the other day just saying how proud he was of me. Um, but that's the start of my coaching career. And anytime you've grown up, under a man with such character and class, it's an opportunity for you to just pay it forward and give it back. And caring for players is something, as we found out over these last few days, is really a part of your DNA. That's been something that's been with you every step along the way. Yeah, you, you know, this is a profession where if you don't have a relationship with players, it's not going to work. And that's the first thing that I was taught. Steve Nash was a teammate of mine. Obviously, he's had a pretty good career in the NBA. And the first thing he told me when I got to Cleveland as a, as a player development coach is he said, just be true to yourself. You know, the players will mm -hmm. take to that. Uh, it's important in our profession that you're authentic and you're genuine. And it's important. You know, if you establish relationships, that's how you build credibility. And once you build credibility, I think players start to buy into anything that you're giving them as long as they know you care about their growth and their development. And you've done that for 11 years as an assistant. Who are some of the other mentors uh, for yeah, you along the so way? My first three years spent in Cleveland. I worked for Mike Brown. Uh, you know, at the time, they were just coming off a, a championship run, losing to San Antonio in the finals. And just trying to sustain that championship pedigree was, was important. And the one thing I learned from Mike was his ability to coach, but really focus on the attention to detail. Did a tremendous job in Cleveland. He's, he's now with Golden State and he's continuing to do a tremendous job. I've spent a year with Travis in Golden State, uh, and that was under Keith Smart. And anyone that knows Keith Smart, you know his personality. Great, great human being. He cares about his guys. He walks into the gym with a smile on his face every day. Uh, his charisma is, is unmatched, and um, you know it's something I take from him. Spent two years in Memphis with uh, Lionel Hollins. A guy that's been around the NBA for a long time, both as a player and as a coach. Uh, you know, one of the toughest coaches I've been around. They were top two defensive team the two years that I was there. And it's his DNA, it's his mentality, it's his approach. And it's uh, definitely what we'll have here in Atlanta uh, because my DNA is the same. And, you know, the last five years in Philly, you know, I, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Brett Brown. Uh, his, his spirit, everything he does on a day-to-day basis is why you see the uh, 76ers in the position that they're in. He had a vision five years ago. He shared that vision with me. He empowered me to, to be in the position to grow. Uh, but his spirit is, is unmatched. I think a lot of Hawks fans in, in reading up about you and learning about you saw the connection with Travis out of Golden State. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so Travis and I worked together you know, the year I was there with Keith Smart. Travis had been with the, with the uh, Warriors for, for a time. And, uh, you know, we've just, that was the start of our relationship. That was the start of our working profession, professional relationship. Maintain contact. Obviously, I congratulated him last year uh, when he 
when he got the job. It's an opportunity for all of us to grow. We've known each other for about 10 years now, and uh, it's great to be here to help him build this organization uh, here in Atlanta. Speaking of Atlanta, you've visited our city uh, for 11 years, coming in with other teams. Now you're coming into the city that you will call home. Your impressions of our city? Uh, you know, an amazing city. Growing up watching Dominique uh, in the city, you know, you're always aware of how special this program is, how special this organization is, how special this city is. I've had a unique opportunity. You're, you know, you come in and out when you're playing during the season, you get a glimpse of what the city is like. Been here, flew in on Thursday and spent some time. I flew back yesterday, and being Mother's Day, had an opportunity last night just to, to, to get out and uh, surprise my mother, my wife, and my sister. Uh, we went to the Anita Baker concert at the Fox Theater, and, and an unbelievable show, <laughs> an unbelievable <laughs> feel of the city, and a unique opportunity. We met Anita Baker in the in the, in the lobby of our hotel earlier that day told her I was bringing my mother to the, to the concert, and she went way out of her way. We ended up spending some time with her after the concert for about 20, 25 minutes. We got some pictures with her, so if that's my welcome to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's every weekend, so just get used to it. Okay, we'd like to open it up to the media for questions. Jelani, if you might, Max, if you want to take one. And uh, we will open it up for questions. If you would, please uh, identify yourself uh, and your media relationship. And so everybody that's watching uh, can find out who you are. And uh, we'll begin uh, the questions right here. All right. Well, Lloyd, welcome to Atlanta. It's Nature Batiste with 929 The Game. Uh, congratulations on getting this opportunity. You know, you talked a lot within uh, your first few minutes about culture and about DNA. Other players and coaches have talked a lot about your coaching philosophy and, you know, just who you are. Can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, what your coaching philosophy is, kind of your style, and kind of dig a little bit more into that DNA? Yeah, so thank you for the welcome. Uh, right from the start, we're doing this press conference right now. I probably have these guys doing some defensive drills. <laughs> that's who I am. That's how I grew up in the NBA. I think that's an important aspect anytime you're trying to develop a culture is just you know what can you control and it's your effort we want to attack the day every single day from start to finish we want to we want to start building habits that we can create um, and a lot of that is going to be on, on me and my staff and, and, and as we're figuring that out you know the messaging to the players is, is going to be there it's going to be our defensive DNA it's going to be our impressions of how to be a competitive team uh, while we're developing while we're growing how do we create these habits? It's through competition, it's through repetition. It's something that uh, we'll preach and teach every day. Yes, sir. How you doing, Coach? Uh, Terrell Thomas, Hip-Hop, since 1987. I want to know, you hear Dwayne Wade, we've heard Steph Curry, we heard so many of the NBA players giving you love and they're talking about the great man that you are and how you are so committed to coaching. How do you plan to bring that DNA and infuse what you know here with the Atlanta Hawks? Well, I owe a lot of those guys some money still. <laughs> um, you know, the relationships is key. And, and spending the time in, in Golden State with Steph uh, for a year, and we had a prior relationship from a couple camps. And Dwayne, when, when LeBron was in Miami, uh, we got to know each other pretty well. You know, I think it's sweat equity, and that's a term I'll use. The guys I've been around, I've spent time with, especially in my player development history, um, they understand what I'm about. It's about work. And the more time you, you spend building those relationships through hard work, their commit, your commitment, they see your commitment to making them better players, better persons. Um, that's where it all started. And, and you know, I, I hope I can carry that forward. I, I want to bring in a staff that can, can uh, echo the messaging, uh, my background and my DNA and my vision and my philosophy. But it's going to start with relationships. It, it definitely will be through hard work. And uh, I have to earn their trust, and I have to uh, show them my credibility, and we kind of combine all of those things and put it together. Thank you. Charles Underwood, Associated Press. Can you talk about the opportunity as a first-time head coach, and, and as you went through the interview process, did you worry about what it would take to, to cross that line and to, to uh, convince these guys that, that you're ready for this opportunity? Well, the key word you just used is process. Uh, we use that a lot in Philadelphia, <laughs> so I'll continue it on a little bit here. Um, when I left Memphis, 
the entire goal for me was to advance my career. And um, five years in Philadelphia, I, I obviously set, set out to do so, not only for myself, but for the organization. And leaving Philadelphia where they are now, it's a great opportunity for them. You know, they have an exciting future ahead. Look, for me, the position I'm in today is about that process. And, uh, you know, I want to continue to grow as a first-time head coach. It's an opportunity for me to grow and develop as I'm preaching to our players for them to grow and develop. So it's going to require a lot of hard work, uh, but the process is just starting for all of us. It's part of my journey. I'm going to enjoy the journey as much as I can, and I, and I hope we can bring the entire city of Atlanta, the organization, the fans, and the players along with that. Liberty Harris here with Intercom Radio Atlanta. You talked about this being your first head coaching position. What are your initial plans once you take this role? First steps? Uh, build a staff. Um, you know, that's, that's the... I won't be able to do this alone. And uh, Travis and I, we, we've communicated, we've talked, we're going to spend more time trying to make sure we have the right people here. As we talk about culture and we talk about this organization and we talk about the advancement of this organization, it's making sure the right people are here. And it's making sure the right people understand what Tony's vision of this organization is and, and we mirror that. So as we continue to talk and we'll, we'll move, move into a lot of different elements of what that means, uh, I first have to build a staff and keep the staff together that uh, is going to be best for these players. Hey, Coach, Bria Janelle with LoudGenius.com. Oh, we have a very unique situation. You're a first-time head coach here in Atlanta uh, for the Hawks, and then the Atlanta Dream also just got a new head coach. Uh, they keep off their season this week. From one new head coach to another, what advice would you give Coach Collin as they get ready to kick off the uh, 2018 WBA season? I'm going I'm to ask her for some, some advice. <laughs> She's been in position a little bit uh, before me, but, you know, I, I hope nothing but success for the Dream. I know they're starting out, and she's starting out with, the, with, with her first opportunity, and, and Obviously, look forward to get down there and, and seeing them. But uh, you know, it's just be true, be true to who you are. I know the phrase "true to Atlanta" is key. We want to be pillars of the community here. Um, we want to immerse ourselves in the community. But as a coach, you have to be who you are, and you have to, to put your print down as, as early as you can. The players have to buy into it. Your coaching staff has to echo that, and the fans will rally around it. So. Hopefully they treat her the same. If there's some support there with the dream, we're looking for support from our fan base. We want to grow our, our program. We want to do it through hard work. We want to get our players to buy in, and, and that's what they'll see. They'll see my vision. They'll see Travis's vision. They'll see Tony's vision. But it's on us to, to put in the work first. Justin Felder from Fox 5 Atlanta. This question is for Travis. Now that you have a head coach in place and you guys have talked about your vision for the team, what have you guys talked about in terms of the players you're looking to acquire in the draft? <laughs> um, we spent a little bit of time talking about, through the interview process, the kind of players we like uh, and a lot of similarities. So as you guys know, we head to Chicago this week and we're going to have the opportunity to interview 16, 17 different players up there. Uh, the hardest part about the draft, as you guys know, is trying to figure out what drives each individual player and trying to project where a 19, 20-year-old kid is going to be four or five years down the road. So, um, you know, we'll get Lloyd up to Chicago midweek here, uh, and we'll sit down and we'll really dig in watching the guys play five on five. Uh, <coughs> Daniel, this in Daphne Sports. Um, you're one of the few black head coaches in the NBA. Like, how much does that add to the um, excitement of it, opportunity, if, if at all? Tough question. Um, I like to just look at myself as a head coach in the NBA. It's, it's always an exciting opportunity as a young black male to be in this position. There's only 30 jobs, and so for anyone that's in this position, it's an opportunity that, uh, one, is you, you can't take for granted. It's, it's earned, and uh, I like to look at it as such. Uh, but I think it's important that as we approach the future of this organization, uh, we're, we're trying to grow it, we're trying to develop, and, and Travis approached me because he wanted to find the right person. And I like to think that for me, moving forward, I'm the right person for this job. Bias one more on Sporting News. Um, I guess question for both, um, now that Coach is here, how do you evaluate 
keeping which staff members on the assistant coaching staff. And you talked about ruling your staff, how you evaluate who to keep, who not to keep, and how to go from there. No, no. So we've been uh, candid and forthright with the staff from day one. You know, I would start by saying, you know, we, we have a very good staff in place here. Um, but it's important that Lloyd is comfortable with this staff. So over the next few days, he'll take time and sit down and, you know, get to know these guys as best he can. Um, but again, you know, we need him to be comfortable and we need to have people that uh, he's comfortable with as we move this forward. Uh, uh, being my fifth team in the NBA in 11 years, uh, I've been on both sides of it. And as Travis just mentioned, it's important in, in, in to, to really follow through in what you're talking about in building an organization and having the right people in the organization to address the players to address Tony and Travis's vision for the organization. It's important, and it's not just about friendships, it's not about relationships that you've had before, it's just about finding the right people, the right character, the right match. So being on both sides of that equation, I think it, as we talk and we communicate and we collaborate on these things, we're just trying to find the right persons to be here. This is Rick Travis, uh, Zach Klein from WSB Channel 2. Um, during the interview process, was there something Lloyd said to you or reassured with you that you, you knew he was your guy or going back to your days from Golden State when you came to Atlanta when the position opened, you're like, all right, he's at the top of our list. I just need to cross up a few things to reassure myself that he's our guy. You know, when we started this process, um, Jeff Peterson, my assistant general manager, he had never gone through a coaching search. Uh, I fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, I had been through a couple in Golden State. And Jeff said to me, he said, how are we going to know? And I looked at him and I said, we'll just know. We'll be in that first meeting and the way they talk, their passion, uh, what they're saying is going to resonate for exactly what we're looking for. Uh, and when we're meeting with Lloyd in the luxurious uh, Philadelphia Airport Marriott, uh, uh, about halfway through the process, I just wrote on a little piece of paper and slid it over to Jeff and said, I told you, we'd know. Uh, so we both knew. Uh, and the one thing that uh, Lloyd said that kind of stuck in both of our minds is, good days adds up. Uh, that's a mantra, mantra that he'd had, um, you know, going through this process where we realized, you know, we're not going to win every single game, but good days add up, uh, and that really stuck out. Lewis Preston from the Crush Sports Talk. Uh, Coach Pierce, what qualities are you looking for in your staff, and how are you going to balance that out in regards to your uh, background and player development as well as defense? Yeah, I think the first thing you got to speak to is character, and I need to enjoy being around them on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not trying to find someone that's just going to say yes to everything I ask or, or, or look for uh, as we're going out on the court. And as we talk about growth and development, not only on the court, but off the court with our players, it's guys that are relational. Uh, who can communicate with our players? Uh, which guys are willing to get on the court with our players? Uh, which guys are capable of challenging our guys on a day-to-day -day basis of being better professionals, better men? Um, better guys in our community and uh, to find a staff that echoes and is able to do that and they're able to relate to our guys um, that's huge you know everyone at this level x's and o's they'll be fine everyone can put together a scouting report they'll be fine uh, but it's that communication it's that ability to relate it's that ability to motivate um, and then when things aren't going well and, and for 82 games, not everything's going to go well. It's how do you get a player, how do you get a staff member, how do you, how do you encourage and, and challenge each other. Uh, I don't want guys that are going to say yes and agree with everything I do, and I don't want guys that I'm going to be on the same page with all the time. I want to be challenged. I want to be able to challenge our guys, but I also want the response. I want our players to respond. I want our coaches to respond. So character, a lot of integrity, a, a unbelievable work ethic. Uh, we're going to be on the court a lot. I'm going to be on the court a lot. You know, our staff to be on the court a lot. Uh, we're not passers. We're not going to be out on the court just passing to these guys. We're going to be out there sweating and mixing it up. And uh, that sweat equity that you build, it translates. It, it carries over. Hey, Coach. Uh, Stake Shapiro from 680, the fan. Uh, knowing it's a league made up of uh, star players, uh, can you talk a little bit more about your roster? Or are there superstar players you think on the roster? 
Are there future stars? Um, obviously, you have three first round picks, but talk about the team you're inheriting and where do the star players come from and are there some there now? Yeah, you know, just knowing the guys from the past year and looking at some of the draft picks that eventually we'll have on this roster, I think this is where it's just about the development. And as, as Travis said, good days will add up, and that's going to be our focus as we move forward. Um, I don't think any of the guys that are on the roster are going to tell you they've played their best basketball yet. And, um, you know, you don't want to put a, a ceiling on what they're capable of doing, but I know that each guy, as we talk and we communicate, and a couple of the guys are here today, it's all going to be about focus on their growth. How can I help them? How can they help us? How can they help teammates? Um, superstars and all those other things we'll worry about later. It's just how can we get better and how can we get better now? Hi, Chris Vivalmore from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. When, when you're an assistant, somebody else is the boss. Now, now you're the boss. I wonder if there's, what's your biggest concern, trepidation, uh, now that it's your chance to, to the buck stops with you? So I think I've been on the job about three days. Uh, I'm ready to throw my phone in the trash. <laughs> Just from all the messaging and calls and people that think they can help me out and want to help me out. It's a, it's a wonderful problem to have. Uh, but I think the one thing I've gone through just from the first, since I've been here on Friday, is just you're constantly thinking, what, what can I do now? What can I do next? Um, what have I missed? And as a coach and, and being an assistant coach, it's the same. I, I think I just added a, a little bit more to my plate. It's not an overwhelming feeling. I'm, I'm not worried about that. It's not a pressure thing. It's just more of there's more layers that are added on to my job responsibility now. Uh, pride myself on being a prepared guy, and nothing's going to change that. So this is kind of a question from the standpoint of the Atlanta fan base, so that could be a Travis question or a coach question for you as well. So I think the fan base is kind of breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief as we're kind of seeing the other side of the process with the Braves and seeing some of their successes. But what's sort of your, your thought or what do you want to say to them in terms of there's excitement now. Of course, we have new head coach for the Hawks, but kind of helping them to be patient and kind of understanding and seeing what the process can be for, for the Hawks. Yeah, um, I think it's important that um, our plan hasn't changed. Just because we have a new head coach uh, hasn't changed our plan from when I sit here uh, last year with Tony on this stage and I kind of gave the vision. Uh, we're going to continue to develop the young players we have to make them the best we can. We're going to maintain our financial flexibility until it's the right time to strike and we're going to continue to look to accumulate assets. Um, our plan's the same. Uh, we have a clear path. We have a clear vision. Um, we just, you know, we're going to stick with it. We just have a new head coach now that's going to help us. Uh, coach, um, are you going to coach the team in summer league? And when you were an assistant coach that took the reins of the team for summer league in past years, what did you learn from that experience? Well, first, the, uh, I will probably coach the, I will coach the summer league in Utah, the first portion. Uh, we're going to Utah and Las Vegas, I believe. And I plan on coaching the, the team in Utah. Um, many of you may not know, but my wife is pregnant. And uh, <laughs> our expectancy date is August 1st. So plan to do Utah early, and then I'll probably spend as much time as I can. But uh, preparing for that, that part of it, uh, we'll pass it on to someone else. Uh, I've coached summer league four times, I believe. Um, three times with, with uh, Philly and then one once with Memphis. It's just an opportunity, especially coming into this situation. It's an opportunity for the guys to hear your voice. It's an opportunity to, to input some of your uh, defensive coverages and schemes in. It's an opportunity to put in a lot of your offensive concepts. Uh, but more importantly, it's just an opportunity to get on the court and just uh, start working with the guys. So I look forward to it. it it'll be fun. Uh, we want to try and get all of our guys, uh, the guys that aren't playing as well down there, and just create a synergy within the group. Um, you know, we'll have most of our staff. We're trying to get all of our players there. Um, but, you know, I'll definitely coach Utah. All right. Thank you all for those questions. We're going to have one-on-ones in a moment, but we're going to break off here for some pictures up here on the stage. So Travis and Floyd stay put. But as we end the football part of the press conference, again, welcome to Atlanta, and uh, welcome to the Atlanta Hawks. Lord. It's great to have you here.
in the day out during that process, during that time? You know, in a lot of ways, it's easy. It's easy. Um, you know, when you have a you have a roster that uh, has gone through such an adverse situation as we did during that time, it's no longer about me. It has to be about we because we have to figure out how to get ourselves out of this situation. Um, you know, there's some point in during that streak where it's hard and it's frustrating. And instead of pouting and fighting as a competitor, you're trying to find the best answers that you can. So it was easy for us to coach a group that was willing to work, willing to learn, and willing to rally together to get themselves. They didn't want to, they had pride. They didn't want to, to, to extend that streak and become in, be in the record books. And uh, the pride, the competitiveness of our guys, and the, uh, the rallying together, it, it's a unique situation. It's hard to say that, but that's truly what happened. Did you have to turn the TV off, get off Twitter? Because, I mean, cause it, it made so much noise. And you can't hide. I mean, it's yeah. the NBA. You can't hide. And, and as a competitor, you know, the guys want to talk when things are going well. You can't hide when things aren't going well. And, uh, no, that, that didn't bother us one bit. And one of the things you teach, and I think everybody does, is you gotta, you got to keep the noise out. Whether you're winning and you're on cloud nine, you, you don't want to fill your head and, and get too ahead of yourselves. And, and whether you're struggling and people are starting to criticize, you don't want to take, take offense to it. Control the narrative and do what you can. Uh, attack the day and, and try and get better each and every day, but you can't worry about the outside sources. And then going forward, what did you learn from it and how do you apply that to this day? Uh, you know, the beauty of work ethic. Uh, I, just, I was just talking about T.J. McConnell, who, who's a guy that embodies everything there is about growth and development. He's an undrafted player that's in his third year that may have had one of the biggest games in a playoff series for an undrafted player in game four in the second round. Um, but that's three years of commitment. That's three years of hard work. That's three years of the development. And one thing I've learned is if you're patient and guys buy into what you're trying to teach, they can see themselves being a T.J. McConnell where they there's growth and there's opportunity to grow. Yeah, because, I mean, one of the things that the Hawks had done well was player development. You see a lot of these guys who – Hardaway, some of these guys who have come along. Right. How do you kind of keep that going forward with guys like baseball or some of these younger guys? Yeah, great. you know, it's it's, it's going to be a new day here. It's a new voice with, with me being here. It, it, it'll probably be a few new newer voices as well as I built the staff out. Um, but anytime there's change, there's excitement. You, you don't know what, what the outcome is going to be. You're just looking forward to, you know, how can I get better? And that's the message that I'll have to our players is, you know, how can I help you get better? Um, and, you know, I think as we attack the day and we come into the gym every day, you know, they're going to be eager to see what I bring, and I'll be eager to see how they work. And then as we, we collaborate, we communicate, we develop these relationships. That's uh, that's the key. That's the key to any franchise. And then, last thing for me, um, did you take that virtual tour of the arena? If so, I haven't. Okay. You, you know, we played we played there la late in the season. We played two games late in the season yeah. in April, so you can see the signage and the messaging of what's going on. I haven't seen it while it's been under construction. I'm sure it probably doesn't look very pretty right now. But you know, there's to me, it's just more about the commitment, uh, the owners. Um, committing to the franchise and wanting to better the arena and the fan experience and the game experience. So regardless of, of any of those things, I think it's just an exciting opportunity that, to see what's next and to see what that arena is going to look like uh, once the season begins. Coach, did you think that this opportunity would come to you so soon, being an assistant coach for so long, being in Philadelphia for the past few seasons? Did you think your opportunity would come this quick? Well, opportunity is just what it is. It's 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 uh, you know it's a chance to to do more. It's a chance to uh, to grow. As an assistant coach, my main and only focus was to assist our head coach and assist the program that I was in. I wasn't looking for the next coaching job. I wasn't looking for the next opportunity on a different team. I was just trying to do my job where I was. When the opportunity presented itself, it was more about just evaluating whether or not the fit was there and if it was the right timing. Now, you recently come from Philadelphia. I know it's been a championship aura in the city with the Eagles winning the championship. The Villanova. Sixers, Villanova winning the championship. And then the Sixers almost going to the brink of going to the Eastern Conference Finals. Now here in Atlanta, you know, it will be a rebuilding season. But what do you think about the fan base? And do you feel like there's any pressure with the Falcons doing well out here, with the soccer team doing well, Atlanta United? Do you feel like there's any pressure to bring a championship or at least get the team back to the postseason? No, I, I don't think it's pressure. I think, um, you know, as we've talked about this, we're talking about building an organization to where it's a winning culture. And 
What that means is we have to do what we need to do to develop the current roster. We need to do what we need to do to develop the organization and uh, finding the right people that share that vision. Um, I wouldn't say it's a rebuild. I, I think it's just more about development and growth. Our, our vision is, is the end game. We want to be a championship contending organization. And whatever that takes, we're committed to doing. And I'm committed to helping our players on the court do that. And my last question for you, sir. I understand the draft is right around the corner. Is there anyone that you secretly have your eye on that you think would be a key piece to bring down here to the Hawks? <laughs> I don't. Uh, you know, a week ago, I was playing game four in the <laughs> Eastern Conference semifinals. Uh, and now I'm going through a press conference as the head coach of the Atlanta Hawks. So I haven't spent much time on the college basketball scene. Uh, we will be heading to Chicago uh, this week, and that'll kind of be my introduction to this current class. Thank you, Coach Philly, for five years. Yeah. When it's a long process like that, how do you prepare your team for what the league might be in a few years when it evolves over time versus what it is when you yeah. start? Yeah, no, that's the beauty of the job, and it's the beauty of coaching is it's uh, – you know, how do you prepare for what's coming? A lot of a lot of our league now is centered on the three-point line and three-point shooting, and you see teams that that got the jump early, Golden State, Houston, uh, that that have taken and, and included analytics and valued the possession, valued the shot, and, and one of the things that you know can can your five men shoot threes, and how many can they shoot? Um, can you avoid shooting mid-range shots? And you know, how do you get to the foul line and get to the rim? Um, so. You know, we'll continue to do that here, um, using analytics, using a staff that can study the game and try and best position our players. So we're playing high efficient basketball on the offensive end and trying to force teams to play low efficient basketball on the defensive end. But um, that's the challenge. You want to find players that can adapt and adjust to where the game is headed. And you want to have a staff that uh, studies and, and, and creates an advantage analytically and strategically that fits where the future of the game is going. Thanks, guys. Thanks Thank you. Hip Hop's is 1987.com.